Hi, hi, happy Thursday. I am Meredith and I am here with our message for the 1st of August, 2024. Happy August. Woo! This is my favorite month of the entire year. It's just something special. It has nothing to do with my birthday either. For those of you who know me, you might say, oh, it's because it's your birthday month. No, that's not it. There's a different smell in the air. There's a different sound in the environment and Oh, there's a shift in the in the atmosphere, and I like it. All right, anyway, we did I already cover this? We have the sun in Leo, the moon in Cancer, Saturn, Neptune, Pluto, maybe Chiron, Mercury joining the retrograde parade soon. All right, let's tune in. Let's see what the cards have to say to us today. We're using the Mermaid Tarot, and we're starting out with the Ten of Cups. Holy moly, what a fantastic card. That feels so auspicious. Doesn't it? For the first day of the month, first card of the, the reading being the Ten of Cups. Ace of Cups to the power of ten. There's a lot of fulfillment and blessing and celebration here on this card. And what are we celebrating? What's the fulfillment all about? There's the sun. Gosh, we've seen a lot of the sun lately in our readings. A vibe, a happiness, a frequency that is just knocking it out of the park for us. Excellent. Two Super auspicious cards to start off our reading for today. You know that the sun is the happiest card in tarot. There's brilliant clarity on this card. We see things very well, though sometimes uh, the light is so bright, we really do need some shades. <laughs> and uh, that's okay, though. Let's see what comes with this. What is that brightness sometimes blinding us to? Now we have the Four of Cups. I want to take a moment on this particular card. You know, it's typically depicted, artistically speaking, um, as kind of a remorseful card. Uh, and it, it's often shown as a little bit of a downer. There's usually a powder. Somebody is pouting on the card there. And when I do my own tarot deck, my, my Four of Cups will not look anything like this. <laughs> Anyway, because it's a really super happy card, let's think about the elements of the card itself. It's a four. It's super stable. And in the realm of water, which is being emotionally awake, aware, alert, intuitive, tuned in, turned on. Wow, right? What What is there to be pouting about at all? And I'm sensing that we're receiving the unexpected because we're in contemplation of three celebratory cups here. It's not like the party's over at all. It's just simply, hey, what's next, right? And here it comes. Here comes that fourth cup. On its own, it's the ace, which is love, bliss, joy, happiness on overflow. We have that to the power of 10 over here with the 10. And then it's joining in with the three cups for more. Isn't that amazing? So why the pouting on this card? So what I pick up here is there is a brilliance to the incoming energy as evidenced by the presence of the Ten of Cups and the Sun. And I spoke about this in a recent reading. It may, may have been as recent as yesterday's message uh, that our manifestation abilities are through the roof at this point. And... Things are coming together in surprising and delete, delightful ways. And the universe, multiverse, the one heart, the one mind is all coming together in such a beautiful way of blessing and fulfillment that for as amazing as our manifestations and creations are, the universe, multiverse has something extra special to add to it that will surprise, delight, bring some shock and awe in the most incredible ways. And that's what I'm feeling here. Uh, things are not what they seem. They're way better than what they seem. And I, I, I may have even put that on a title to a video recently. And if I didn't, then I spoke on it. Anyway, I feel profoundly connected to the energy of surprise and delight. And this four is right in the middle of the reading. So we're very stable in our center. Excellent. We have what it takes to receive all that we have been investing in. Hmm. Let's see what's next. 
Yeah. Ooh. Hey, there's some confirmation, folks. There's the, excuse me, there's the temperance card. Archangel Michael energy right there. Powerful. And alchemy is bringing together things that don't typically come together, right? And making harmony out of them, creating something new, wonderful, and fantastic. And that's what we're on about here. There's a level of peace and allowing to this card too. When you look up temperance, you'll see the word patience written all over the place. And I feel that's the energy of going with the flow and allowing the divine to surprise and delight. So temperance becomes an incredible confirmation for us in this scenario, in this lineup of cards. Next set of two, the first is, ooh, the devil. Look at us being caged over here. What's it paired with? Fantastic, the fool. Wow, the fool's been very present lately. You know what this looks like to me? We have shed an old skin for sure. We've liberated ourselves and we've set ourselves free from an old paradigm of belief system that had us living limited in a cramped way. You know, like this devil card shows a mermaid stuck in a trap, right? And here we have the fool. The fool is all about taking a leap of faith. Another thing that we've spoken on this week in the messages, and this is us setting ourselves free. And whatever divine alchemy had to come together to make that happen has a lot to do with the sun and the 10 of cups and the dreams, the manifestation intentions that we hold in our heart space that we are connecting with and creating in the now and the multiverse is blessing it with more and extra. And that more and extra gives us wings. That's what I feel here. So we're taking a great leap of faith in ourselves, in our journey, and everything that we have been investing in. So these cards become an amazing confirmation toward all that we have already put together and then what comes of what we've put together. <laughs> Let's see who's from the bottom of the deck. What are we not so aware of? How is the universe helping us out behind the scenes? Our first card, look at that. Nine of cups now. Literally the wish card, the dream come true card in tarot. So we have the nine of cups, the 10 of cups, the four of cups, the sun. Amazing, temperance even. Do I even need to pull any more cards? Probably not. And now look at this. There's the page. There's your manifestation coming out of the cup, coming to life right in front of you. And these two together make the 10. So it's like having the 10 of cups doubled in the reading. Powerful. Two is the number of miracles. So if you add tens together, you get 20. Take the zero, you're left with the two. So two is a number of miracles. There is a miracle coming to life in front of each and every one of us. And then we have, look at that. Whew. Wow, I am just so taken with that card. Queen of Swords, she's been around quite a bit too. And I feel like her message there is, you can rely on yourself. Look how present she is. And she does appear quite formidable there, doesn't she? She's all heart, this one. I know, I talk about it constantly. Where every time we turn over the king and the queen, that they are spoken of in a bitter, cold way. There's nothing bitter or cold about them. They are willing, though, to lead from the front exactly where leaders need to be, right? They lead from the front. And they are willing to face every hardship for what they hold and nurture in their own heart space. And I feel that's what we've done. And if ever there's a shadow to be grateful for on that Four of Cups, it's our ability to walk into the darkness and bring the light that we are. And I feel like this queen is emphasizing that. And that's what it took for us to bring our dream to life because we had to overcome the programming in our ego awareness. And I feel like this is a message of success. Yeah, Six of Cups now. Gosh, we are so blessed with cups. So now we have, <laughs> oh my goodness, look at this. The nine in the page making a 10. We have the 10 proper. 
Now we have the six and the four making a 10. So it's like the 10 of cups showing three times. Three's the number of heaven. We are bringing heaven to earth. Look at that. Final card. And this one's been around for us for a while too. Hello, Scorpio. There's the beautiful death card. This is all about the transformation that has been taking place for us. And the death card has shown up so frequently and in really positive ways. If you need a sign, if you're asking, if you're out there saying, I need a sign, show me that um, I'm being successful in my journey here. There it is. You're creating transformation. And Six of Cups is the soulmate card in tarot. You are your own best soulmate. This is a channeling card as far as I'm concerned. And, you know, we're receiving, we're receiving downloads of information from our own soulful presence. So this is, for me, the equivalent of either having the Queen of Cups or the High Priestess sit right next to the Death card. And that's a phenomenon that happens on this tarot table a lot. And I think it happened even in yesterday's reading. Regardless, it's happened this week. And... We're being phenomenal rock stars right here in our journey. And I feel that these cards are infusing our confidence in a big, big way. So our confidence was good. <laughs> now it's even better. And I feel like it's supercharged by the energy of the sun. And the number of times we can make the Ten of Cups come out of this reading. It's really quite lovely and beautiful. All right. No angel answers today. We're going to go with the mermaid oracle. I'm on a theme, apparently. <laughs> so, further guidance, confirmation. Answers to questions in these cards, perhaps, for you. <clears throat> Sweet. Memories. Taking a walk down memory lane, having some hindsight here. And that may be a much better perspective for the Four of Cups because here you can capitalize on your successes and your less than successful experiences. Use your memory field and your hindsight for uh, great investment energy in the oncoming. So take, take the hardships, take the highs and the lows and put them all together because they shape the, the now moment which then influences the oncoming ripple. So take a walk down memory lane. Celebrate all of your successes. Next card is love. Be the love that you are. You are pure, raw love on earth. Bring it. Be it. <laughs> Shine it through the energy of the sun. Be in love with your journey. Next. Excellent advice. Move forward. Move onward. No energy of the hanged man. There's no pause here. This is definitely a take action. It feels gentle though. And I like that too. One more. Seriously, here it is, miracles. I spoke on that a few minutes ago. <laughs> miracles are taking shape. Stay in motion with your dream. Stay in motion with your manifestation. Reap the reward and the blessings. Final word on the reading. What did I do with that deck? Oh, it's right here. My goodness. Uh, we're using the Elemental Oracle. How is our soulful presence informing our waking consciousness? Ooh, here we go. We have number 44, the Biome connection. You are an integral part of the all that is. And be awake, aware, and alert to what is being asked lovingly of you to participate and contribute within the energy atmosphere. Nice. Have a beautiful Thursday, everyone. Thank you, as always, for joining me. Peace, love, happiness. Namaste.